Guys, it's Will here doing a video update from the backyard garden here in New Cumberland. Uh, it's July 13th, um, and I think I only have about three minutes of video time, so we'll see what we can get in today. Uh, but yeah, we're looking at some green bell peppers here. Uh, they're growing and getting uh, getting nice and large. Got some, got a purple bell pepper here, and another purple bell here. Um, and I've harvested off both the purples already. Um, this tomato plant here is the Dancing with the Smurfs purple tomato, um, and it grows out through this whole patch over to the tomatillos, which are behind it. Um, and you can see a Russian kale uh, in the middle there. Um, over here, we also have a Russian kale, uh, lact uh, lactinato, I believe that's how you say that one, lactinato kale, uh, here and here, uh, which I'm going to move this melon, or I'll untangle that melon later. So there's two lactinatos there. Um, and another Russian and a curly kale that's on its second year. I took out the big curly kales that were here. They went to seed. I collected a bunch of seed. Uh, and they were just getting in the way of our path walking here. So I took them out. Um, uh, let's keep going around this way. Uh, so over here, uh, our black diamond heirloom watermelon is very small. Uh, we'll probably get one or two fruits off of that, if anything. Um, but our bigger tomato, our bigger watermelons are over there. Um, we have our jalapenos. Um, I just harvested some of these guys and uh, gave them to my neighbor. Um, just gifted her some, some jalapenos because she uh, makes some really nice uh, pickled jalapenos. Uh, over here we have the tomatillos coming in. Uh, See, so they're in those little husks, look like paper lanterns. Uh, very beautiful uh, to look at. Um, and they're going to be producing our green tomatoes that we're going to be making green salsa with those. Um, the asparagus. Uh, a couple days ago, was still shooting up some new uh, asparagus shoots, um, but it's just been producing all year, and uh, it's dropped seeds, I know for sure, because we've had, this is the second year the asparagus has been growing, and we have it growing in different parts of the yard where we didn't put it originally. Um, so yeah, in the middle, in there, we have the turmeric and ginger, um, and a few tomatoes that came out of the compost that I used with the turmeric and ginger because they are heavy feeders. Um, so in our compost, we had some cherry tomato seeds and some pumpkin seeds. So that's how some of these pumpkins started growing, uh, which I've been trying to manage. Uh, so some of this romaine has gone over uh, to flower now, uh, which is fine. I'll hope to collect some seeds or just let it drop so I don't have to worry about planting uh, again. Uh, we have a lot of cucumbers coming in. Uh, we harvested about six or seven cucumbers last week. And there's a bunch throughout here, all through the middle. It's grown all the way over here where I believe there's some cucumbers. Yep, some little, little baby cucumbers even starting to grow over here. So this whole cucumber plant's producing. Um, and then back here we have some uh, black bush beans uh, that are starting to put on flowers. So that's really awesome. I've been having some issues with some uh, Japanese beetles in this area. Um, I've just been grabbing them when I can. See, we got one here. I've been grabbing them when I can, but they fly away. So I grab them when it's raining and wet because they won't fly away and I'll throw them into the chicken, uh, into the chickens and the chickens will eat them. So we have these pumpkins here. Uh, some basil, some lamb's quarters. I like to let some lamb's quarters go to seed because it's something I like to have in my garden. Uh, so I like to let a few plants go to seed uh, every year. Um, the aronia have been very damaged by the Japanese beetles. Um, so uh, I've just been, tr just like I said, trying to take them off when I can. But you can see they're just loaded on there. But if you shake it a little bit, they should all fly away. So I come out and try and do that a couple times a day. Um, our tobacco is doing good here. Um, I don't know if I'm going to put tobacco in the same garden with my food next year. It's just something we threw in uh, because my partner really was interested in having some tobacco. Uh, another one of those cherry tomatoes from the compost. Uh, this is our green asparagus and the cucumbers coming up through here using the asparagus as like a trellis. Um, our musk melon, uh, also known as cantaloupe, uh, they're coming in. We got two melons there, uh, another one there, and I'm sure there's some that I just haven't even seen yet. Um, so that's it for this patch. Um, my video might shut off, so if so, I'll do it in two parts, um, and that'll be, uh, in the title, this will be part one. Um, but yeah, uh, we have our sangria watermelons that have completely created a ground cover, uh, underneath our corn here, and this is our bloody butcher heirloom red corn behind it. We have our frosty corn, which is a shorter day, uh, because squirrels came in and, and interrupted our rows, so I just wanted to make sure I filled this in as much as I can with corn. So we have a our longer day corn, which is our heirloom red corn, which just started to shoot out silk and its tassels are coming out. That corn is easily about uh, almost eight feet tall. And then we have some uh, uh, Blue Lake FM1K uh, white pole beans as well. Some Kentucky Wonder pole beans that are growing up this corn. 
uh, utilizing the corn as a pole. Um, so that's our three sisters that we did this year uh, with the water mountains, uh, the beans, the pole beans, and the corn. Um, and it's doing very well. We harvested corn from our Lemoyne location. I'll be posting a video update from the Lemoyne location soon, uh, but we already harvested some corn last week. Um, so another bean, I don't know what this one is, it just came up, volunteer bean, another musk melon. I haven't uh, seen any fruits coming on on this one, but I'm sure there's fruits on this one, if there's fruits on this one. Uh, we get full sun, we got some bees in there doing their actions, so I'm sure we're going to get some fruits. Um, some bell peppers, um, and they're starting to just put some fruits on. Um, some of the collard greens were resurrected, there's another one there. Um, uh, some more of these black beans, I'm using them to help fix nitrogen for these goji berries, which they have recovered from their nitrogen deficiency since these beans took off. Um, and I have harvested a fair amount of goji berries from this plant. Um, so these are the last little bits of the goji berries. Um, we harvested a bunch off of these branches already. Um, the Jerusalem artichokes have taken over this area. Uh, the sea buckthorn has also been fairly damaged by the Japanese beetles. Um, and I've been doing my best to keep them off of there. Um, and the sea buckthorns are kind of getting shaded out, so I'm definitely going to get rid of these Jerusalem artichokes because they're not my my favorite plant. They don't, uh, they're not very resilient. They go bad quick, so they're good for pickling. Um, so we're probably just going to pick a bunch of these roots out uh, soon to make sure that our sea buckthorns get the proper amount of light they need for the rest of the season. Um, our blueberries we've harvested from, I'd say we've gotten a carton of blueberries off of this in total, but the chickens also really like the blueberries, so that's been an issue we're having. Um, so you can see we hooked up our chickens with this umbrella. Uh, to provide them with a little bit of extra shade um, and we use the top of their little uh, chicken tractor to, to keep our watering can which we also fill up their little water dish with it um, and our chickens have been eating kitchen scraps and foraging every morning every morning I come out here around 6 in the morning and let them out for 30 minutes to an hour so uh, oh yeah and then we got this green grape here that I was gifted so hopefully this will grab on this pole um, but yeah, this is our garden, our backyard garden here in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. And um, it's bio-intensive. We have a lot of things growing with each other, trying to make sense of it all. Uh, this is my third year uh, actually gardening.